Hello everyone and welcome to the Waffle Flower channel. It's Shannon here and today we're using several Waffle Flower stamp sets and dies. I'm going to be using this possum stamp set mainly today with the matching dies. I'll be also using the Hello Stamper stamp set with the uh, matching dies. I'll be using a kitty from that stamp set today. And then I'll be using the Happy Day stamp set and the Floor Cat Meow stamp set just for their sentiments. And lastly, the uh, Insta Love die. I've already stamped several of the dogs from the Possum stamp set, as well as the Party Hat I stamped four times, and a kitty from the Hello Stamp Her stamp set. I stamped them on a scrap of white cardstock. It's a 110 pound cardstock. And um, I stamped them in Memento Tuxedo Black, which is a alcohol uh, marker friendly ink so you can use this this ink when you want to color your images with alcohol markers which is what I'm doing right now I'm using a variety of mal uh, alcohol markers just just because I don't I have a limited um, color selection of my Copics so I'm using all the ones that I have to color these puppies in today uh, I'm using uh, Marvi Uchiha which I'm using right there a um, my Ohuhu which is right there and then I will be using some Copics later so when I color uh, with alcohol markers the main process the simplified process is I start with my lightest shade and then I work my way through my markers to get to my darkest shade now for this uh, Corgi I'm going to color the fur at the, the top of the Corgi is going to be a really dark brown really actually black because I even use black and so since I'm transitioning from a really light shade to a very dark shade uh, I'm using a lot more than just three shades like I typically do so but I'm still following the same process of light to dark and then dark to light again so I've got my darkest shade now and then I'm working my way back through so I have like a, a dark brown a medium brown here and then I have a lighter brown and then I have the same three kind of um, hues with uh, the golden color and sometimes I'll go back in and add a little bit more of the darker brown if I feel like more of my brown shades if I didn't quite get the intensity is uh, the blending is smooth or the intensity is much as I'd like it to be and that corgi's done this is a bull terrier and so he's pretty much going to be white and black. So to color him, I'm just taking a really, really light blue marker and just coloring, shading in the areas where there would be a shadow, like the bottom of his belly and under his chin, where his neck would be. And for this um, dachshund, I'm just using my um, Copic markers here and just coloring him in with just two shades. Uh, I find that I can get away with fewer shades of my Copics because they have this wonderful um, brush nib which allows me to, to really feather the uh, my strokes and that just creates a smoother transition with fewer colors so I really like that brush tip on those Copic markers are just that's just really great. The Ohuhu and the um, Mariuchia doesn't quite have as nice a nib not even close really to the um, it's just a bullet tip and a chisel tip for the Ohuhu. And then the brush tip on the Marvi is just not as nice as the, the Copic. So I really like that Copic brush tip. I'm using a Copic again to color in this kitty. A really light gray. And then I'm going back to my Ohuhus and doing a medium gray. And then I'll do a darker gray too. And then once I've colored all... Well, I'm going to show you how I color most of the animals any ones that I repeat and color the same I'm gonna do that on my own off-camera because you guys don't need to see me color it twice so that I just finished my darker shade now I'm going back or I'm sorry my medium shade and I'm going back with my um, lightest to kind of blend it all out and smooth out the transition and just be just going back in the darkest a little bit to make the stripes on the kitty and just finish him off so once I get all these images colored, um, 
I'm going to die cut them with the, the uh, matching dies and then we're going to start constructing these cards. So the main focus today is going to be on using pom-poms on your cards as accents. I'm just going to give you guys a couple ideas. There are really so many things you can do with pom-poms. Um, I'm just like the four cards that I'm showing you today is just the tip of the iceberg. It really is. I'm going to color one more corgi here. This is just a lighter kind of the more classic corgi I think. People think of a really golden corgi when they think of a corgi so that's what I'm doing right here. Just more of a golden corgi. corgi. Same, same markers as I used for the Shiba Inu which was the first dog that I colored which I think that's the breed of that dog. <laughs> and that is done. I will take a colorless blender, so this is a Copic colorless blender, to kind of pick up any of the, any times where I color outside the lines, which I do often, I'll just take the colorless blender to kind of pick up any of that um, marker ink that's outside the line. So that's really helpful. If you don't have a colorless blender, you should get it just for that, just for picking up your mistakes. Okay, so like I said, I die cut everything and I've got all the images separated and kind of how I'm going to, um, do my four cards. I'm going to use these four dogs for my first card and I've got the three of the party hats pulled out and I'm just going to adhere them with some liquid adhesive onto the top of their heads real quick here and then I'll set them aside and then I'll bring in my pom-poms. So I'm just going to show you a couple ideas you can do with your pom-poms. Um, I think they're really fun accent to to your cards. I don't see them used in cards very often. I think it's just because the thickness, but um, a lot of times when we make our cards we put a lot of dimension on it, they're already about the thickest, at least of these tiny pom-poms anyway. So these are the bigger pom-poms that I have. These are 10 millimeters and I just showed you the smaller ones real quick. That's 5 millimeters. So I'm going to use the little bit larger ones today. This is the largest I'm going to go with the pom-poms and I'm going to thread them or string them on this um, twine. So this is just some baker's twine. It's the black and white, you know, striped kind. And I'm going to do kind of in a um, rainbow. I'm actually going to end with purple instead of start with purple. And I'm just taking that needle and just poking it through that pom-pom and then pulling that pom-pom down through. So really easy. I'm going to basically create like a garland. So stringing up your pom-poms is one way you can use them. And with a thinner um, string, more like a thread, you could definitely do this with the um, smaller pom-poms, which is the, the five millime millimeter ones. That would work too. And one more color here, and then I'm gonna um, cut too. So I strung up the other set of six, the other rainbow two, and have a little gap in between because I'm going to have these dogs kind of hold on to this garland. So I'm going to cut with my X-Acto knife along their mouths just so I have a spot to feed in that twine. So I did the uh, dachshund, now I'm going to do this bull terrier. Just going to go around his, his nose, not all the way because I don't want to take his head off, but I do want to kind of go around a little bit, about a quarter inch up off of his, from his nose. So a little lift there. A little tap, see? And then I'll do this Shiba Inu too. And this one's a little trickier because it's a uh, rounder. So I'll go a couple times repeat just to make sure I get all the way through. I check the back side and make sure that I'm cut all the way through. If I'm not, then I'll flip it over and keep trying to cut along the same area that I was cutting prior. And there we go. So I'm going to take this. I've already stamped my sentiment. And this is all from the Possum stamp set. It says, hope your, di your day was Possum. And then I'm going to take the um, twine and I'm going to stick it in the dog's mouth, but I'm going to use my, uh, the tip of my X-Acto knife to kind of feed it in. So I'm getting the, the twine on the tip of that blade and then kind of 
feeding it through the mouth. The, this dog is the hardest one just because his mouth is the smallest. But once I get it in, it's pretty easy. It's once you kind of get a little bit through, then it's easier to do. Kind of work more into it. So I'm just working some more in there so it's got a good hold. And then I'll move on to the other dog, the bull terrier. So I'm going to pull him over. And I'm just going to kind of lift his chin up. And that will fit right in there. Pretty easy for him. Using the, the uh, tip of the uh, X-Acto knife to help. Just so I don't bend it or crease it too much. Because it's a lot smaller than my finger. So it can get up under his chin a lot better than my fingers can. And then I will bring the stocks in and just tuck that under. That's the easiest by far. And there we go. We've got all the the dogs holding on to that garland. And now I'm ready to arrange it. Kind of get the gist of where it's going. Making sure my spacing is not too off. Looks good. So now I'm going to add some foam tape to the back. This foam tape is going to give a little dimension and it will also hold the um, little bit of twine that's fed through the and through the dog and into the back, hold it down a little bit. So I'm just going to cut here because you guys get the gist of that. And then I'm going to pull off the backs and just adhere it down. So these are very, this is a, it's a very simple, actually I think this is the most complex card that I make, but still it's a very clean and simple card. So all the cards today are going to be very clean and simple. And then I really like clean and simple cards with these um, pom-poms. I think the pom-poms work really well as an accent for something that's really clean and simple. They really stand out. They don't overpower. It doesn't get too busy. So... And they're just fun. It's great to add some texture and um, and um, a little bit more dimension too. And again, yes, this, these larger ones probably would not be good to mail. So the 10 millimeter, which probably wouldn't be good to mail, but the five millimeter, I think that would be fine to mail. A lot of our, it'd be just, you'd treat it like um, anytime you have dimension um, in your card. It's going to be a little bit more for postage, but just as, as any card would be when you have um, about like a, a quarter of an inch dimension. Okay, so I'm just going to trim the excess off here. I got those all stuck down. And now I'm going to uh, add some of those small, teeny tiny, those five millimeter um, pom-poms to the top of the party hats. Now I'm sure you've probably seen this done before, but this is definitely an oldie but a goodie, but this is a fun way to add a pom-pom onto your cards too, is doing it on top of a party hat. So I thought I would throw it in there too. Really cute. So that one's done. I'm going to let that all dry. And I use glossy accents. You can um, use some other liquid adhesive, but I really like glossy accents. It dries um, pretty quick and it's nice and tacky. So it's pretty good for these um, pom-poms. Uh, also, another good alternative would be a hot glue gun. Just um, hot glue guns, I think, can be a little bit messier than the um, glossy accents, or at least I found the glossy accents easier to work with than the hot glue gun. Okay, so now I'm working on my corgis. I have three in total, two colored dark and one colored more just the golden color. I'm just going to kind of arrange them on my card here. And I am going to, I have them on foam tape. I've already did that and I'm just peeling off the backs now and sticking them down. And then I am going to use those three pom poms in the top left. They're going to be like tennis balls that these corgis are chasing. So I'm going to draw some, uh, some a dashed line or kind of a curved line to to represent the the uh, dog running and the ball bouncing so so I'm just gonna draw some quick lines with the pencil I'm sorry you can't see them but they're just I'm they're just rounded if you happen to have like um, a cloud die or something you could use that too if you don't want to freehand it that would work fine if you kind of use it to trace and make the uh, circles they're semicircles I should say 
So now I'm just taking a permanent marker and I'm just making that dashed line to represent for the ball and the, the, the corgi. And then once I get this done, which goes really fast, I will erase my pencil marks because I don't want to leave those on there and then adhere my um, pom-poms. And this sentiment, a good day to be happy, which works really cute with these corgis chasing out the ball, I think it's so funny, is from the Happy Day stamp set. So now I've erased, and <laughs> I'm remembering to erase right now, so I'm erasing real quick before I glue these because you definitely want to erase before you glue those down in case you trap any um, pencil marks somewhere where you don't want it. And then I'm just putting a little drop of that glossy accents and then I'm putting down the pom-pom. Uh, and that card is done. And now I'm going to move on to a really f fun idea. So I took the, the medium um, Insta Love die and I cut five of those frames with um, the 110 pound card stack and I glued them all together with some liquid adhesive. Really easy to do. They've all dried now. I'm going to glue a top hat on my other corgi. So this is the other corgi. And I'll set that aside here. And I'm going to kind of create um, a scene here inside this little picture um, of like a dog kind of in a ball pit. That's kind of what I was thinking. So I'm going to use my alcohol markers. These ones are um, the same color as my um, pom poms that I'm going to use. And I'm just creating coloring in the background really quickly here, not spending a lot of time, not being really careful. Just want to make sure, I just don't want it to be white. So I'm coloring it in, sort of replicating like a lot of um, balls like a ball pit. <laughs> and once I get this all done, I'll start to construct the scene and, um, or the little picture I should say, a scene is probably way too grand, but I'll construct the little picture with the, some of the, act, with the actual pom-poms. Actually I use quite a lot of pom-poms, but still plenty within your little bag. So when you do purchase these, I just purchased these at my local craft store. Um, they were really inexpensive. They're like a, a dollar fifty for the mi tiny ones, and for the um, uh, ten millimeter ones, those were like, gosh, I think a dollar eighty. So really inexpensive, especially if you only use a, like the last card three on a card. This one I use. This one I really break the bank. I use a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to only have just the mostly the corgi's head showing so I'm going to trim off parts that I don't are um, hanging off the edge and I'm going to grab a little bit of my foam tape I'm going to double stack it so there it has um, twi two layers of foam tape I'm going to put it on the upper part of the corgi so I don't want it down low I want it at the top I'm going to glue the lower part of the corgi down flat flush onto that little um, backer. And again, this backer, the, this little white cardstock, is the negative space when I die cut the Insta Love um, die. So that's where that came from. So I'm just using some glossy accents, holding it down there till it sticks. And I'm going to just start multitasking here, doing two things at once, squeezing some more glossy accents and starting to take those little pom-poms and um, sticking them down onto that uh, little rectangle of cardstock. And I'm just doing whatever color. I'm not trying to match up whatever is underneath with the the pom-pom on top. I'm just getting them down there, sticking them on. I do want to try to, I want to keep it within the confines of that little uh, cardstock uh, rectangle because it won't fit into the frame again if it's extending out. So I'm being conscious inches of that. Um, and sometimes I won't even put it at the very edge if it gets too close. 
using my pencil here to kind of tuck it underneath. So I am tucking some underneath that corgi. That's why I've lifted it up with that two layers of foam so I can tuck some behind. So it looks like the balls are behind there, the behind the corgi, and then I'll have some balls at the front so she looks like she's buried in a ball pit. I almost did the little girl from our new sweets stamp set, which I am in love with those little girls. They remind me of my, my little girls, but um, I decided to just stick with dogs this time. Keep trying. I've already used four sets, so I thought I'll just try to limit the amount of sets that I use. But I get excited and I want to do lots of things whenever I have an idea. So that's why I end up making so many cards for you guys. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Okay, so I've got them all stuck down there, and you see I've covered up the, mainly the body of the corgi, just so it looks like the head's poking out through the ball pit. And I'm going to let that dry, so it's dried now, it doesn't take too long. And I'm going to now tuck it in there and see if it fits. Yep, it still fits, so if anything didn't, if it didn't quite fit in there, or there's some like um, pom-pom sticking out, I would just trim it with my scissors, so that's what you'd do if any of your pom-poms got kind of beyond the confines of that uh, that cardstock. So now I'm just going to take some liquid adhesive and just stick it down onto the front. And again, this sentiment is also from the, um, it's the same sentiment that I used before for the uh, garland pom-poms. It says, hope your birthday was possum. And really quickly, I'm going to finish up this last card. It's very simple. So I take that cat from the Hello Stamper and I've got foam tape on the back. The sentiment is from the Flora Cat Meow, and I stamped it already, and then I take the uh, cat to stick it up top, and I'm gonna take a, this is a glitter pom-pom. I didn't use very many, but I wanted to show you one just because they're so pretty. They got like little tinsel in them, and they come in a variety of sizes too. And I'm just gonna put that right between the cat's paws because it reminded me of a kitty toy. And I had to do a cat too, because I can't just do all dogs. And that one's done. So now I'm going to show you all four cards. So I've got the kitty one, the cute little corgi in the ball pit one. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not corgi. I think I called it corgi the whole time. The Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu. And then there's the corgi one with the chasing the tennis balls. And then the first one we made with the pom-pom garland. So lots of ideas. And this is again, guys, is just the tip of the iceberg with the pom-poms. I'm sure you guys can come up with a million more with a lot of the sets that you have. So if you want any more product info on the uh, products I use, the stamp sets and the dies, please visit waffleflower.com. You can also follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.